Welcome to the CBS Eye on Money show. It is Thanksgiving Day. And no, it's not Thanksgiving Day, I know. But we are recording this in advance and we have a lovely guest to join us today. And it is Thanksgiving Day. So uh, welcome, Mark Talercio. What are you thankful for today? What am I thankful for? Uh, I have a lot of stuff to be thankful for this year. It's been a pretty good year. I had, I was thinking about this the other day. I had like really three main objectives this year and I'm thankful that I accomplished all three. One, get married. Done. Done. That was a big one. Two, get on a plane with Amanda and Theo. Done. And it was a great trip. It was a great trip. Got him overseas for the first time. And three was to get him into the public school of our choice here in the city. And that happened. So I'm good. There's nothing that has to do with our show that you've just been thankful for. So I'll just cover that part. So (laughs) I am thankful this year. This has been kind of a shitty year for me, Uh, just personally in terms of like there was like death and illness. So my mother-in-law died, then my mother's partner died, and my friend Maureen has gotten a terrible diagnosis. And so it's just been like a heavy, especially last few months, been a very heavy time. And I am thankful for this wonderful network of friends and family that I have, which includes Mark and Amanda and Theo. And I think that every time you go through one of these really difficult times in your life, you are reminded that the all this nonsense about the money and the career and all this, it doesn't really matter. I mean, yes, of course it matters. It's a means to an end, but I'm thankful for my inner circle. And, um, and I'm also thankful for this program, my outer circle, because this is the best part of what I do all week long is spending time with Mark and with you guys and talking through things and learning about who you are and what your aspirations are and hopefully how Mark and I can help you along the way. So that is my Thanksgiving. Uh, Mark is not going to the parade this year, correct? No. I will watch. And uh, and then um, I will pick up my pies and move on. That's what I will do. All right. Thanksgiving, we are bringing in um, a guest today who is a listener, and his name is Jordan. And Jordan, you are from... Uh, I can't even say this. Jordan is from Alaska by way of Hawaii, which kind of interesting to me. Jordan, what are you thankful for today? I, well, since you said this will air on Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for my brother. I will currently be at his house because I don't really cook and he (laughs) cooks a lot. And so I'll be eating and getting stuff with food. I love that. Wait a second. Is your brother also in Alaska? That's what I was about to ask. That was the reason why I moved up here about seven years ago. But how do you go? I mean, Hawaii to Alaska, you're in paradise. And then what brought you to Alaska besides your brother? Was there an opportunity? Well, there was. He, I lived with him for a year. And initially, I was thinking about going into pharmacy school. And so it was going to be maybe stay with him and figure out that. And then just continued on with life. And I decided to stay. So what brings you to the program here on your Thanksgiving Day? I am a recent listener to you. I first got on this financial journey a few months ago when I got my second job. And that's when I'm like, wow, I have the cash flow to start getting rid of my debt. And Mm -hmm. so I started listening to a really big program. Actually, they talk about the complete opposite of everything you say on your show. And so Uh I started with this big show and then... I eventually found my way to you, actually through the public library system. So I was listening to some other audiobook about finance, and it was dry and boring, and I wanted to fall asleep. And then I ended up finding your audiobook, and I was like, wow, she has personality. She's funny. I mean, even towards the end of the book, you were like yelling at me. I felt like you were talking to me. It was a around the life insurance part. Uh huh. So oh I was my like, God. I need to find more books. And then I, you don't have any more books. Oh, I do. I will, baby. I did. I pre-ordered it. Oh, you are so good to me. <laughs> Come on. I mean, what's better than that? I think that it's so funny. I, it, when people say to me, like, who's your competition? I'm like, there's a zillion different financial people. And it's about personality, like who talks to you, right? And and so I'm so glad that you found us. And, and let's see if we can help you out. And maybe we'll provide a different perspective on how to get where you want to go. So tell us about yourself. And then let's try to identify what needs to happen for you next. Yeah. So I moved to Alaska. Um, I currently work as a hospital inpatient pharmacy tech. That's mm-hmm. my primary job. I work that week on, week off. So I do seven days in a row of overnight shifts. What? And then, yes. And then oh I my get... God. 
and then I get seven days off, and that's great. But then, because I have debt, during my seven days off, I work six of those seven days. <gasps> and so, in a 14-day period, I have maybe one and a half days, but it's not really days off because it's from overnights and I switch back to days to go to my other job. So there hasn't been a day off, but you said this is airing on Thanksgiving and that will actually be a true day off for me. So thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank God. (laughs) Thank God. So how much do you earn as a pharmacy tech as like the day job? So my primary job at the hospital gross, I'd say about 55,000 a year. And then with my current job, if I work all six days and do that for the whole year, it will bring in around roughly 22000 So I'd say maybe gross like seventy five k. And then, I don't know if you know what the PFD is. It has to do with the oil, but we get a paycheck every year for living in Alaska. I think this year it was about 3200 All in all, I think average income right now would be about 80000 that's great. And so the reason why I got the second job is I have credit card debt. So I have about 13000 in credit card debt. I have my new Jeep Cherokee that I got because my used one got totaled. And so that's at 30700 I have a 401k loan at 3100 And I have student loans at 24500 And I'm a little bummed about that because I'm not sure if the forgiveness is actually happening. And so that. Well, wait a second. So do you work, but do you work as in the pharmacy tech? Are you not um, able to use the public service loan forgiveness plan? Because is that not a, uh, do you work in a hospital? I did, but there was a few years I was ineligible to do it. And so I did, I, I did put in some years, but I would still need to. I think do at least another four or five more years, something like that. Mm, that could be worth it. I know you're right. You got. We have to see what happens with loan forgiveness. So, how much money is in your 401k? You said you had a, a loan of 3,700. What's in the 401k? The 401k currently is. It has about six thousand. There's a 403b that has about 2,200, and I was told that I'm not able to touch that because it moved to a 401k. And so this 2200 I was told, and I'll have to confirm that with Fidelity, is frozen and I can't touch it until maybe I retire. I would have to confirm on that. Mm-hmm. And in my regular 401k, it's all in pre-tax except because I started listening to your show and hearing Ma- Mark talk about it. It's all Roth. So I just had my first contribution of Roth. So all right, my primary job. Yeah. So I have my primary job the hospital, they match 50% of the first four and a half percent, and they do a Roth option. So that's what I'm doing. And they also contribute 3% annually on eligible compensation, which I think last year came out to about 2200. How did all the debt accumulate? In other words, we're going to work hard to help you pay this debt off. But yes, what happened? Oh, I was 18 living with at home with my dad. My mom had recently passed away. And so it's just mm-hmm. kind of living life there. And I got my first credit card and I was excited. $500 Mm -hmm. living at home. I had a part-time job, easily pay those off every month. And then it went to $750 and I was so excited. And then it went to $1,000 and it kept like, it almost doubled to $2,000. And then it was getting to a point where I was not making enough because, you know, I only worked 20 hours at the school. All of a sudden I had about... 12 to 24 credit cards at once. I went to California and I saw Ed Sheeran in the very front row, but I had paid like two grand for two tickets (laughs) because they only sold it as two and I had to sell one. And it was really bad, Jill. I came back. I was negative in my bank account. I had maybe maxed out credit cards. And that's kind of the rampage that started and it just grew. Luckily, I am a lot better now. And so I'm trying to get rid of. I think I have maybe eight credit cards now, but only four of them I have balances on. How old are you, Jordan? I am 29. Can I just, I want to ask one other dumb question. So you rack up all this debt and now you are working two jobs to like really get it paid down. And do you feel like you're making progress? That's my number one question. Do you feel like, uh, yes, I'm actually moving the needle a little bit. I see things going down. Is there any progress? Yes, because the credit card, it had about maybe 12000 So now it's down to 8000 Wow. 
And That's so, good. and then my other credit card is 4,400 and that is 0% until September of 2023. I recently started using mint aggressively and now I'm like seeing transactions. I try to reconcile every day. I am making progress now with the second job. Absolutely. Okay. I have about roughly 1500 to 1700 extra cash flow, depending on either if I have any extra shifts or if I decide not to eat out as much since I told you I don't really cook. And yeah, so that's kind of my plan right now. Okay. And you're young. And, and how about like you're living, like, are you renting right now? What's up? Are you, li- are you living on your brother's couch? I was living with him, but, and then I moved throughout, but now I have a mortgage. I got it in 2021. So I live in a you know two bedroom, two bath condo. Wait a minute, you bought something? I was renting a room and the person I was renting a room from was going to sell the house. So I oh was, he, he was nice. I He gave me about half a year to find the place. So I was looking aggressively and I found something when I was at lunch with some friends and I bought it, I think that day or maybe in a day or two because it okay, wait perfect. a second. How much did you pay for this place? It was 155000 2.875% FHA, 30-year term. And it was honestly, with the prices in Alaska for rent, it's uh, a lot cheaper than if I were to rent a one-bedroom or even mm-hmm. a studio. Some of the studios rack up to like twelve to 1500 a month, and that's without any utilities. So, okay. So there's something at 0%, right? But there's another one that's at like a 20-something percent? There's two credit cards. One that has 8,300. 1,300 is being hit every month with, I think, 24.99. Oh my God, we've got to get that. that. We have got to pay that off. So that's number one priority is that one. So after that 1,300, it's 7,000 of that. Then that's 0% till December, 2023. Mm -hmm. And then my other Wells Fargo credit card is 4,400, 0% until September, 2023. Okay. So we get done, um, we get done with that 22 or 24% interest rate. We can hopefully do that. My fingers are crossed. I'm literally crossing my fingers by like January. Okay. You have to get through the holidays. I get it. So January, February, let's give you a better, by the end of February, I want that paid off. Okay. Next, we're going to then attack the Wells Fargo one at 0% because now we have to use February. Uh, we have to go uh, March, April, May. So then that that's going to get paid off. That's what I was going to say. That one, the goal should be by May of 2023 for that Wells Fargo card to be done. Okay. And then what does that leave us for the other bit, the, the 5,000 at 0%, then we've got to pay that off. So by the end of May, that Wells Fargo is done. Then that five grand, you get to, you really, you just hammer that down. So June, July, August. So then by the end of September, I'm hopeful, then you're done with that one. So we get rid of September, the September one by May. We're going to shoot to get rid of the December one by September, October. Okay. Yeah. That's how you're going to do this. Like you are going to go all in. You're going to get this done. Okay. Now, we are not sure about the student loans. You'll just pay that. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll figure We're that gonna out. We're going to do the monthly for now until. Exactly. Okay. Now, my next question to you is when you got that cha- that new uh, Jeep, tell me about that. Like, what is the, what's the interest rate on that car loan? The interest rate, I think, is 3.49%. The payment was supposed to be 529 but I decided to up it to 550 to you know pay I guess a little extra and I've uh-huh. just been ingrained in my brain 550 okay and not 529 when I do my calculations so mark once we get the the credit card stuff done by the end of the year should he take the 1500 and then pay down that car loan aggressively uh or maybe split the difference and maybe build up some cash and then maybe put a little bit extra towards the car loan that's what I was thinking so then let's say that it's a year from now. It's Thanksgiving. You're like, I'm done with, and you better stay in touch with us because I want to hear all about this. Okay. So now you're like, okay, I got, I have this extra $1,500, right? I've paid down my credit card debt. You can breathe again. You can totally breathe. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take that $1,500 a month and you're going to say half of that, that $750 is going to be added to the $550 that I'm paying down on my car. All right. So now you're going to put $1,300 a month 
on your car, the other 750 is going to go into a savings account. It's going to be very boring. So then here's the thing. I don't want you to freak out about the retirement right now, because essentially what we're suggesting to you is that, you know, you're going to enter your thirties and you're going to have very, you're going to have a much better handle on your debt. Okay. But then we're also going to have to do what we're going to have to do is you cannot work this schedule forever. Yeah, like you just I know can't. that. I, I, everyone I've talked to, they know that this is temporary. Even the my manager that I at my retail pharmacy job, both managers, by the way, great shout out to shout out to them. Um, Good, but yeah, I won't be able to do this forever. So let's check in with you. Here's what I would like for you to do. It's like we're your buddies. Thank Why don't you, you give that. us a holler at the end? So here we are. It's Thanksgiving. So at the end of February, give us a holler. Just check in with us. Hey, just want to give you an update. Here's where, like, I've paid this much off on my credit card and it's done. I'm so happy. Thank you. We're going to be like your accountability. Jordan can become a character for the for, for 2023. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to totally come back on the air and you're going to be like, here's where I am. And you're going to tell everybody because everyone's going to be inspired by you. And also, you're going to help us avoid the problem which we have, which is everyone says, oh, you have so many rich people on the air. And Jordan, I can be honest with you, you're not rich, but you're very lovely and we're going to get you out of debt. Then you will be rich. Okay. So credit card debt's going to get paid down. The 401k loan is going to get paid off. So I'm not really that worried about it. So it's credit card debt, then it's the car. And then we're going to have to think about like really what's happening with that uh, student loan. I think that that's probably going to be the next tranche of what we uh, are going to accomplish, that we're going to really look at that student loan and and attack it and, and whack it down. Then as you whack down the, you know, again, as you whack down the, the, the car loan and then the student loan, but you're still saving cash, you're still saving money, that's $750 a month, so that you know, hopefully by the end of 23, you've got like seven, eight, nine, 10 grand in there. Maybe we'll see, we'll see what, you know, how the oil paycheck goes. And then you'll see also like, well, what's reasonable. Maybe your primary job can, will pay you more. Maybe that primary job, instead of like 55 grand at some point goes to 65 and you're like, I can live on 65. Life is good. I don't have to do this extra job and I can manage my debt and I can manage my savings. Those are the kinds of questions that we will help walk you through. I really love that. I think you're going to be okay. Mark, do you feel it? One year from now is going to be a huge world of difference. And it's only a year. It's going to fly by and you're going to be in such a better position. Jordan, you're a delight and we wish you the best. And of course, stay in touch with us. We're very happy. You're going to be a recurring character um, on the Iron Money program in 2023. I like that. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. If you've got financial questions, if you need some help worming your way out of this debt that you've created, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Let us know how we can help you. And if you want to come on the air, just check that little box. While you're on the website, you can check out all the other content and you can sign up for the free weekly newsletter. It comes out every single Friday. It's a really good warm up for your weekend. Follow us wherever you find your podcast. Do check out our other program. It's called Jill on Money. We are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mark Talerso is the co-host and executive producer. Okay, well, listen, it's Thanksgiving, so give thanks and do something nice for someone else. If there's someone at your Thanksgiving table who looks like bummed, just go sit next to the person and like put your hand on the person's back and be like, I'm here for you, dude. Like, I'm here. There's always someone who's unhappy at Thanksgiving. I find that not in your house, Mark, because it's only a few of you. But anyway, just be nice to someone. It'll make you feel so much better. It's a good thing to do. Curiosity, compassion, community. Happy Thanksgiving. We are thankful for you all and that you listen every single week. And we will talk to you next week. 